Oh, and we just joined Facebook. So we can go through again and um, introduce ourselves again, because why not? So I'm Jocelyn Jeffries. I'm the intern for Arts at NJ. Um, I am also the host for NJGA Presents, which happens every Friday, but now this is happening every um, this Friday. And we are on our third student round table. So excited to have everyone here. So um, I'm gonna pass it over to Chow and Julia and I'm from Northern Burlington and I am a, a senior and yes. Hi again, <laughs> I'm Chicha and I am an arts ed marketing intern alongside Jocelyn and I am from Bayonne High School from Bayonne, New Jersey <laughs> and I am also se a senior and I dabble in a lot of musical theater. <laughs> I'll pass it on to Julia. Hello, I am Julia, the programs and marketing assistant with arts ed New Jersey. I am a recent graduate from the University of Edinburgh in Scotland. And I'm currently repping my high school from back in the day, class of 2016, Stewart Country Day. <laughs> um, while I was in Edinburgh, I was really involved with theater as a producer and a performer. And I first got involved with Arts in New Jersey because my, of my involvement with speech and debate, um, and particularly with um, the interp category, so monologue type categories. It's my first time doing one of these roundtables. Really excited to be helping out. Back to you, Jocelyn. Ruby, so now we're gonna meet our panelists, say your, um, what you do, your thing, and um, say where you're from and your grade. So we're gonna start with Teresa. Hello, I am Teresa Ettery. I am a junior at Jackson Memorial High School in Jackson, New Jersey. Um, very excited to be here and I, do a lot of different things in the arts at my school. I am in our concert choir, I am in Tri Music Honor Society, and I am I do all the plays, all the musicals, I love all that stuff. And I joined Color Guard my freshman year, and I'm I'm also one of the Color Guard captains. So that has been really something I've enjoyed. And yeah, that's what I do. I do a lot of things. <laughs> okay, Audrey, can you go next? Hi, I'm Audra. I am a sophomore in the Morris Knowles High School in Rockaway, New Jersey. Um, I go to school for Votech for acting. And um, so it's really fun. I every single day is just dedicated to acting. And um, I'm also a lover of the psychology behind acting. And um, yeah, that's that's me. Gianna, how about you? Hi, my name is Gianna Albanese. I am a junior from Cedar Grove High School and my thing right now would currently have to be music and theater as well. I am a member of my school's drama program as well as our choir program. I am currently in select choir and even through 2020 and even to this new year, music has really helped me a lot through it. So I'm just grateful for all the opportunities I get with my school. Absolutely. Kevin, how about you? Hello. You can hear me, correct? Okay, perfect. Hi, I'm Kevin Valencia. Uh, I'm a junior. I attend Wayne Hills High School. Um, I play cello. Um, I am a, I've learned cello since fourth grade. I play with the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra's youth program. Um, I am a French hornist with, within our band program. I play mellophone for both drum corps and marching band. And uh, music has definitely just helped my life substantially. So I'm just thankful to be here and to help present. Wonderful, Alan. Hello, uh, my name is Alan Joste. I'm a student at Ewing High School and I'm in ninth grade, it's my first year at high school. So I joined the drama club and I uh, participated in uh, ITS for the first time. So that was pretty fun. And uh, I, they're doing a play, so I will try out for that. Ruby and then Vahan. Hi, I'm Vihan Agarwal, and uh, I, I go to John F. Kennedy uh, Memorial High School in Islam, New Jersey. I'm currently a freshman, and I joined the choir in uh, back in middle school, and I also um, play drum, play bass drum in the marching band. Awesome! It's so cool to see so many freshmen here. Um, so we're going to pass it over to Tichao now to start our icebreaker game. 
Okay, so to break the ice between everyone, we're going to play a little game called Two Truths and a Lie. Does everyone know how to play it? Yeah? Okay. I'll just explain the rules just in case if any of our viewers do not know. So one by one, each person in the circle or Zoom square <laughs> uh, says three statements about him or herself. Two of these statements are facts and one must be a lie. The other participants then must try to guess which statement is a lie. So I'll go first. Okay, so I dislike seafood. My favorite colors are all pastel colors and I despise candy or any sweets. So of course, please unmute yourself. And if you have, a, if you're in a quiet area, you can have yourself unmuted the entire time. Um, you don't need to raise your hand, Alan. You can just <laughs> unmute and just just call her out on on what she's saying. That's nonsense. <laughs> uh, I think it's candy one. You are right. I I love candy. I love anything sweet related. So if you catch me on a sugar rush, you know why. <laughs> I'll pass it on to Gianna. All right. So mine are all performance related because really I don't really have much exciting stuff outside of theater in my life. Number one, I am a member of a circus arts association. Two, I've worked at a Renaissance fair. And three, I've been on a Broadway stage before. I think it's the Renaissance fair one. Yeah. I want to work at one once I graduate high school, but right now it's just a dream. Yeah, I was about to say that sounds wonderful. I almost, um, when I was in South Jersey, there's a bunch of like historical areas and I almost worked there as a reenactor, but at the time it was too difficult to get all the papers set up. But that sounds super, super awesome. And I look forward to seeing you at the Renaissance Fair. <laughs> Thank you. I hope I speak, I hope so too. <laughs> So Gianna, pass it on to the next person. Um, I'll pass it on to Alan. Okay, um, let me think. So, so I have a pet dog. I was not born in New Jersey and I have been to another country, there you go. I, sounds, I think it's you don't have a pet dog. You got me. Do you have any pets? Oh, I just have a fish. Okay, that's something. <laughs> so, that's uh, one. Let's see, how about Kevin? All right. Well, um, I wasn't born within this country. Um, I never sang within a choir within any sorts of groups or hmm, what should I do for my third one? I'm an avid book reader. It's the choir one. Nope, it's not it. You seem like you'd sing in a choir. I think everyone here has sung in a choir at least once. I think we can all just agree that that has happened um, just to us or because we chose it. Um, and, huh, I'm gonna say the middle one because the avid book reader one seems true. The middle one was, I believe the, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting. The middle one was about the choir, right? Oh, yeah, so okay. no. Then never mind. <laughs> I'm going to say the first one. Actually, no. Um, I used to be an avid book reader, but I'm not now. So I'm, that's why it's a lie. And by used to, I mean when I was eight years old. But I was born outside of the country. I was born in Czech Republic. I moved here when I was roughly four. So yes, I was not born here. Groovy. Um, so pick a person. Nope. Um, I'll pick Teresa. Okay. I am a vegetarian. 
I have broken the same bone three times, and I play the piccolo. I think it's the piccolo. That's right. I have never touched a musical instrument beside the besides the recorder in my entire life. Good job. Okay, I have a question. How did you break your bone, the same bone, three times? Um, I guess I just never let it heal <laughs> the first two times, and it was all within, like, a couple months of it. It was not a fun. I think it was the end of eighth grade. It was not fun for me, but it happened. I had to miss my dance recital. That's awful. So with that, um, pick between Julia or Vahan. Did Audra go yet? Gosh, I'm so sorry, Audra, please. <laughs> she can go, Audra. <laughs> it's no worries. Um, let's see, I am an ambassador to uh, a theater company. I am a model. And I have two, how many? I have two dogs. It's the dogs. Yeah, I made that really obvious. I'm so sorry. <laughs> don't be, don't be. Do you have any pets at all or? Yes, I have one dog. He's six months old and he's so cute. <laughs> I hope to see him around the stream. Uh, you could pass it on between um, Jocelyn, Julia, or Vihan. Um, Vihan. Okay, so number one, I love reading books. Number two, I have an iPhone. And number three, I have played the violin before. I feel the like violin. that's good. No. You don't have an iPhone. I do, so. So it's the books? Yeah. We are not a bookish crowd here. <laughs> okay, so Julia, you go. Alrighty, okay. I have triplet younger brothers. I was born in Connecticut. And I am a tap dancer. The Connecticut one. I was born in Connecticut. I think it's the triplet younger brothers. That's true, too. <laughs> yeah, I have two left feet. I'm a terrible dancer. <laughs> yep. All right, Jocelyn, I think it's you. It's me. So I have two brothers. I have an older brother and a younger brother. I have, uh, I love podcasts. I wrote them down because I just didn't want to forget. And I um, didn't get to write down a last one. So let's think of something. My favorite flower is a daisy. Podcasts? No. A daisy because it's too specific <laughs> no i actually have only one brother i'm the youngest in my family didn't you say <laughs> that statement before um maybe i was I trying to like avoid the things that i had already said because i'm just very much like that where I'd, I'd share anything so i was like what haven't i said and i was like i can't say anything about acting because i've already told you guys that i don't act anymore <laughs> Well, so with that, that comes together with our um, icebreaker. I feel like the ice is thoroughly broken. I love getting to meet all of you. Um, so we're gonna start to move on to questions. So take it away. And anyone who has questions, who is watching on the stream, please comment them and we will answer them. Julia, you wanna start it off? Yes, sorry, I didn't want to speak over anyone. All right, our first question is, what is a song lyric that resonates with you in 2021? Mm -hmm. And I had these questions in advance, and yet I'm not sure what my answer is. 
So I'm going to pass it on. Does anyone want to go first? Anyone? Yeah, Audra. So the whole chorus from Rise Up by Andra Day um, really resonates because 2020 was a really rough year for me, um, as I was probably for a lot of people. And I just feel that 2020 is going to be my year um, to finally, I don't know, do the things I want and be who I really want to be. So uplifting. That's a great one. Does anyone else have one that jumps to mind? Yeah, Gianna. I was gonna say um, almost the entirety of the song, This Is Me. It's like a song that like, especially the lines, I'm brave, I'm bruised, I'm who I'm meant to be, this is me. Like during this year, like I've gone through like so much within like just like the past 11 months alone that it's like, I discovered things about myself I would have never known. And like, I sometimes like felt like being like the way I was, was like weird in a sense. And I was like, now I have to face myself for almost a whole year. How am I going to deal with this? And then I heard that song and I was like, this is me. I have to live with myself. So I can't really judge myself. That's wonderful. Um, so I'll say mine, uh, a song lyric. There's a bunch I've recently to, I don't know, make myself feel better. I've been putting down lyrics from musicals and movies and stuff that like really resonate with me but a song from uh, my I love Billy Joel and the, the lyric slow down you crazy child um and then you can afford to lose a day or two I am like I'm the I'm like a perfect storm of Hamilton and uh and Burr because I lean more Burr but I never ever stop working I work like I'm running out of time and when we went into quarantine I was like okay, like I'm not gonna be able to do the same amount of work, the same type of work. So I can afford to lose a day or two, it's okay. And Vienna waits for me, you know? And I think that's something that all of us can really think about because I'm sure all of us are very driven about our passions. It's such a good one. Does anyone else have one? Does it have to be from like a musical? Oh, anything. No. Yeah, totally. Okay. Um, well, it's kind of funny. Um, my One of my teachers said this was a good song. Uh, so it's uh, called Good Riddance, the Time of Your Life. And, and it's a, really about 2020. I hope you had the time of your life, like Good Riddance. You know, I'm done with it, ready for a new year. Definitely time for a new year. OK, I've thought of one. Uh, I love the song 400 Lux by Lord. That's a song that really got me through high school. I used to listen to it in the car with my friends on the way to speech of eight tournaments. And there's a line that's sort of talking about moving through the tree streets. And it sort of reminds me about living in the suburbs. I feel like for a lot of last year, I resented being in the suburbs with my family, but now I'm sort of starting to embrace it more and think of how grateful I am to be able to spend this time with them. Yes, so that's mine. Does anyone else have one? Yeah, um, I would say this song, well, not even just the lyrics, the whole song, um, Survivor by, by Whitney Houston, you know that one? <laughs> um, I think it embodies like how everyone you know, came out of 2020 and we hope that we'll survive 2021 as well. I mean, there's already been some, you know, some things happen, but hopefully we're all gonna come out on the other side. Well, not hopefully, we are going to. <laughs> we are. <laughs> I've been listening to that song a lot too. What a tune. <laughs> Great, does, does anyone else have any any lyrics? If not, we can move on uh, to Chad, do you have the second question? Yes, um, I can't think of any lyrics at the moment, <laughs> but um, let's see. So this is kind of going to dive into the main topics of this um, student roundtable. So um, why do you think arts education is important? Big question. So I can kind of start it off um, and then we can go off of that. 
I think arts education is so important. I've been doing my stream for about uh, like, oh, it's crazy, like seven or eight months now. And I've met so many wonderful people. And every single time I ask them, how did arts affect their lives? They're always like, it changed who I was for the better. It made me more outgoing. It made me feel more comfortable in my own skin. And that is such a valuable thing that everyone needs. Um, and I saw Audra with her hand up. So I'd love to hear what you have to say because you are deeply involved. <laughs> so um, being in the Botech program, um, an hour to an hour and a half every single day is just devoted to acting. And it really creates a family. And I mean, there are sports and of course I was in debate as well and speech and that created a whole different family. And I just felt in acting, everyone has a mask on on stage, but as soon as you're off stage and backstage, you take your mask off and you're finally able to be yourself and you really discover who you are and you find the people who you really wanna be with. And it's liberating to know you don't have to wear your mask all the time. Absolutely, that source of community, to Chow. Oh, I was just gonna say, um, I can really resonate with what Audra said. Um, it doesn't really have to be with theater and performance and all that. It could be ranging anything from just even artwork, because I know artists have a really hard time being able to showcase their art and be able to make a career out of it. So it's really liberating and really wonderful to see how everyone um, helps everyone out and tries to just uplift everyone. And I saw Alan had his hand up. Uh, so I would say it's important because it gives people an outlet to uh, get their creative juices flowing. And it, it gives uh, people a sense of accomplishment when they, when they complete a, a task, like, you know, putting on a, a musical or something like that. Whereas, you know, if, if they can't make the accomplishments, the, the physical accomplishments like you would do in sports, you still get a, a sense of recognition. You know, you feel feel proud of yourself. Yeah, go ahead, Gianna. I was gonna say it's important for me because sometimes like I've met so many people before they made it into the arts, in my family especially, where they didn't even know who they were and it developed their personality so much. It's a place of acceptance and pride and happiness. And it's just an outlet for people to be able to be themselves. And it's just something that if I didn't even have that, I don't know where I would be right now. Absolutely, absolutely. It definitely, um, I'm not an actor anymore, but it definitely gave me my path. And I think that a lot of people who are watching and, and a lot of people who are in the arts ed can feel that even if they even if they aren't going into an arts field it's still like i know some people who are going to be um lawyers i know people who are going to be scientists and they're talking about how this changed the way they thought about the world and how it just made it so much easier to be here which is super super valuable Someone out there, Kevin, did you want to go? So um, arts, um, arts has been definitely helpful for me. Um, I started within fourth grade, even though I had fresh, I, not freshman, I'm sorry, for uh, first grade uh, art classes, uh, music classes and art classes, and um, just learning basic music, even though, you know, it may seem from an outsider's point, it's like, oh, it seems like, oh, it's notes, stuff like that. It's music has taught me life learning skills that I believe that I wouldn't have learned just as strong as anywhere else. And I believe that it's probably one of the easiest way I have to learn them. Um, I've learned time management a lot just from handling 15 different musical related activities at once. Um, um, I've learned discipline within just trying to get everything's perfect within music and trying to like make sure I'm the best person I am. And I've learned how to project myself and just be you know, more public speaking just playing instruments and like just going places and just auditioning places and all this can easily help students just gain important skills they need for anything in any major or any job for just outside of life this can help them a lot so yeah jumping off of that i i also think that being a part of a creative community at an educational level can have such a formative impact 
not only on like your your uh, art practice, whatever it is, but also with the rest of your life, no matter what field you're going to go into at the end of the day, it's really so valuable to be able to spend time with a group of really fantastic, like-minded peers and educators who you can communicate with and who can guide you through um, not only your performance or your art or your music, but, you know, other fields of your life as well. And I think that's something that I've always been really grateful for, for my experiences in arts education. Yeah, also one thing, um, arts education also releases your stress from other classes, and it also helps you showcase your talents to others. Absolutely. Um, so with that, if no one else has any other um, thoughts, we can move on to the next question. Okay, our next question. Um, sorry. <laughs> Here we go. Um, we've already talked about what sort of art we're all involved with. Is there any way that your guys' schools have limited the way that you're able to produce art during the pandemic and how have things changed? Yeah, I think Audra, you had your hand first. You wanna start? Sorry, yes. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to a Votech school, but the original school I'd be going to uh, is Jefferson and they're making you pay for any after school activities you would like to be in. The first one is $50 and any activity after that is $100. Um, so to kids who can't find that kind of extra money, basically it's gone for you. You can't do the fall drama, you can't do the spring musical, you can't do any music honor society, you can't do any star chorus or band and an entire family is just shut down and it's heartbreaking and there's no arts, there's, you, and there's no athletic teams either. You have to pay to be into those and it's so heartbreaking and it's like almost frustrating that because of this pandemic, the school's hurting for money so much that they're making, they're, they might not even put it on any shows this year because they can't find enough people. That is really heartbreaking to hear. I'm sorry that that's something that is happening. That is awful and we'll be looking into that. Um, yeah, that's awful and we'll be looking into that because that's awful. Um, yeah, so who can go next? Um, so I quickly, since March, um, I've noticed a lot of closures within us uh, stuff. So within our high school program, definitely one of the biggest things of this school year was that we can't play in person. So we still have, we still have, um, we still have practices online for our symphonic band. We had, and that's practically the meet where we all play muted and once in a while, so one section just plays in so the uh, teachers can go give it, um, instructions and like uh, critiques so that way they can improve. We still have lessons and lessons online that are more individual based and help others. Um, as for everything else, we also, um, for our marching band, we've, we had a show, we fielded, um, we just all had a distance drill. We, had, we still had a season of sorts um, our jazz band is starting next week. Uh, I cannot wait for it to be back. We're going to be inside, but just distant sound. So we're going to be within a gym, just distant sound and just playing jazz. Our district, thankfully, while there are some limitations that, you know, it's it's completely acceptable and I'm completely fine with it. I'm so grateful for our town and our district to like allow us to play music and get back together one way or another, so. I have to agree with Kevin. I'm so grateful for even throughout this pandemic, the opportunities that my school has given me. We had our fall drama this year. We did It's a Wonderful Life, and we were able to do it on Zoom after we were banned from our auditorium. We were only able to do one thing in our auditorium before Thanksgiving, which was rehearsals, and we were able to record a competition piece for ITF, as well as another vocal feeder competition stand. And then 
they just shut us down. Auditorium was off access for the music department. We aren't able to use it for any of our performances and we had to move everything online. We went to Zoom, we went to YouTube. We have access to almost every single digital resource that has been available to us. And my heart truly aches for Audra and any other schools who are like that because I seriously cannot imagine having it be my senior year and being told that because my family can't afford it, I can't do what I love. Like, that's absolutely gut-wrenching. And sometimes like hearing that, it kind of just puts into perspective how lucky some of us get to be that we even get to do what we do during this time. Absolutely. Um, the point that Audra brings up also kind of reminds me what our boss, uh, Priscilla, has told us how a way we could actually change how um, the Board of Education views the arts because they view it as an extra curricular activity, something that isn't needed when in reality, it's really a core, core course that everyone needs. It not only helps you academically, but it really helps improve you as a person. It makes you more outspoken and helps you with like multiple social skills that are frankly really hard to obtain if you just kind of try to weasel your way through life. And she has mentioned that a way to actually change that, to change their viewpoint is to attend their board of education meetings and see where, how um, money is budgeted throughout the school. And if they see um, students and art advocates attending their meetings, they would really start to consider and actually start to try to make changes in the way they budget and view the arts. Yeah, I'm really glad you brought that up. That's a really good point. So with that, uh, to Chow or Julia, would you like to take us to our next question? Sure. Yeah. Um, have any of you produced any new work recently that you'd like to share? Or not necessarily share the work right now, but to talk about? Our school was able to perform our winter drama and I believe it's up on YouTube. Um, I don't know the exact link, but you can search up It's a Wonderful Life Cedar Grove High School if you wanna check that out. I know it's past Christmas season, but we were really proud of what we did. So, and it's awesome. And also our school was able to collaborate. Our entire district is doing something for our arts and our, for music in our schools month. And we're creating a district-wide YouTube channel with our elementary schools, middle school, and high school showcasing the music talent in all the grades within our school from K to 12. So that's going to be in March. And we're actively prepping for it now within our classes. Creative situations like that are really, really inspiring and really awesome. Um, if you don't mind, when we get off the stream, do you mind sending that to us on our Instagram so we can highlight you guys throughout the um, next coming months? Because that would be wonderful. Of course, and I also, don't mind. Yes. Also, the other things which you guys are going to bring up, please send us things which inspire you, things that your school is doing, because we want to highlight them because it's so extremely important. So this isn't something my school's doing, but rather a really personal friend of mine. His name is Anthony, and he's actually creating his own TV show. He was on Broadway as Ryder, or Riker, I don't remember, for Paw Patrol. He has worked in almost every Disney, um, like Universal, around the planet. And he is creating a series called Far, Far Away, the series. It's, um, it's a take on the average known Disney classics and kind of adding a little gay twist. That's just, it's, um, it's won so many awards already. It's in the making and um, he's having so much fun with it. And it's all of his close friends he was on Broadway with and families in it. Um, and it's just a great way to just kind of bring the modern classics into the new era. <laughs> That sounds fantastic. Could you say the name one more time? It's called Far, Far Away, the series. Sounds so cool. 
groovy. Well, as I mentioned um, before the stream started, my school is having our fall play tonight and tomorrow. If you guys want to check that out on our Instagram page, I posted. Um, I edited it <laughs> and digitally directed it. So the adult directors had it and then they gave it over to me. Like they had all the students on, they chose the play and they taught the students how to speak it and how to do everything and how to act it. And it was awesome. And then it got sent over to me with all the wonderful children, all the wonderful people, my wonderful peers. And then um, I filmed it over with them and then I edited it together and I'm really excited for everyone to see it. We can't wait for it. Please um, share, the, share the Zoom link with us and we'll be sure to check it out. On the note of Jocelyn's Shakespeare show, um, I also work with the Shakespeare company called Hamlet Isn't Dead that's based in New York. I'm their marketing and social media coordinator and they've got a show on tonight and tomorrow night that you guys might be interested in. Um, it's a poetry reading of poems by Phyllis Wheatley, who was America's first published black poet and second ever published female poet. Um, I think it's gonna be a really beautiful show. The cast have been working really hard. It's on Zoom. If you find Hamlet Isn't Dead on Facebook or Instagram, it's gonna be 7 p.m. tonight and tomorrow. So it's a little plug. <laughs> All right, um, so our, our school obviously participated in uh, ITS, so that was a lot of fun, and they're going to put together all of the uh, ITS videos into one video, and they're going to post it on the district YouTube page, so that'll be pretty cool. And then we're going to do a play, like I said before, I don't know what it is, but I'm excited for that in person, so that's nice. Yeah, um, the entire state connected to NJ Thespians, they did an all state musical. This was earlier in the year. We filmed it in September and it came out December and um, just wild, frankly. A um, lot of layers, a lot of staying away from each other, but being together. So it's really, really fascinating. The people who are figuring out how to do it virtual, like I went to I, um, I went to ITS and J as well, and um, I got to do a really cool workshop with Anthony Greco, um, and he taught us how to do virtual shows, and um, and then it's just really cool seeing who like how we figure out how to do it in person too. So, Du Chow, you had something? Yes, um, my school actually has. Uh, my school is actually really lucky. Um, we have all of the arts programs, dance, music, drama, art, you could name it. We probably have it where I'm just so happy that they actually didn't cut anything. But um, we're, we're doing most of our things, almost all of our things online. We had a district-wide um, virtual choir. We had acapella on, yeah, we had acapella. We filmed it all um, separately, but our wonderful teacher compiled it and it's released on YouTube. I'll be sure to <laughs> link it somewhere. <laughs> and we actually had um, a fall play, which was, a, it's a wonderful life as well. <laughs> and we actually showed it through Zoom. We uh, partnered with our um, TV productions team. And this spring, we're trying to do an in-person Zoom sort of spring musical. We're doing Once on this Island and it's really interesting to see how this will go. We're doing Once on our Island too for a spring show. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if our directors are like, all the directors just have a meeting. They're like, we're gonna do the same shows, honestly. <laughs> our school is doing Adam's Family. Oh no, Audra, what, what is your school doing? Um, I did, oh my God, I'm blanking on the name. It's a Wonderful Life, uh, my, our Votech Academy, we actually did um, a reader's theater of that last year before the pandemic. These are some great shows. I feel jealous. <laughs> okay, you can Guess what my fall play was. It's a Wonderful Life. 
I know. It's, it's so, it must have gotten so popular that uh, creators must have made so much money. <laughs> um, but also in the fall, we did our marching band show. We had an Elton John themed show. We t it was entitled I'm Still Standing. It was pretty cool. It was, um, we usually have a really big, super cool show. But this was a, you know, for what we could do, it was a really good, um, it was a really good use of everyone's time. And everyone really enjoyed it. And upcoming, we usually do Broadway night at my school, like kind of a variety show in the fall. We obviously could not, my director had hoped my choir director had hoped to be able to do an in-person one by now, but unfortunately we cannot. So we will do, be doing a virtual one. Very exciting. And my spring musical is The Adams Family. We are trying to do it in person, but if not, we will be doing it over Zoom, and that's all going well. And I feel very privileged and lucky to be able to be doing all these fun things. Absolutely. We are doing ours in person and it's really exciting and we're trying to figure out how to even possibly go about doing that. Um, but we are very blessed to have um, very strong support from our principal. And we have a couple of people in the administration who are very in support of theater. And so we just have a lot of really dedicated people. So like you got to have like all three of those things, all four of those things, all million of those things to combine to like even make it possible right now. But just keep on pushing and be those dedicated people. And then you've got, you know, one of the three. <laughs> and that's a big part of it. So um, does anyone have any comments before we move on to the next question? Okay. So um, unless Tu Chao has a specific question, we are around 45 now. And so uh, we should start getting to one which will really be like a meaty question. So that's that. <laughs> I don't really have a specific question. I was just about to get to that meaty question. <laughs> oh, very nice, very nice. I'm excited. <laughs> so uh, we are all here because we love the arts and we love we want to advocate for it. So we would love to hear about your hashtag because of arts ed story. Anyone could take the floor. <laughs> I can go first for those who um, kind of want like an example. So I was an actress since I was six and then I went into my freshman year of high school and did my spring musical and I just didn't love it anymore. And I was really confused as to why this thing that I had loved my whole life wasn't resonating and wasn't fitting for me anymore. And so I kind of went through a kind of depressive period where I was like, what am I gonna do now? And I was like, I don't know. And so then I had um, how I like to write it on college admissions essays is I had a passion a whole, a passion size hole in my heart. Um, but <laughs> so then I went into that summer and I was like, what am I gonna do? And then I found film from um, an arts ed, uh, not an arts ed camp, from a camp which was run by the late um, Kate May Film Society and it just clicked. And now I have the opportunity to work with really awesome people at my school who give me the opportunities to like edit and direct our play and to do the props and to do all these things which will help me in the future. And so if I didn't have this support base then I wouldn't have made it to where I am now and wouldn't be here with you guys, which is super valuable. I'll go. So I saw my first Broadway show at seven, which was Mary Poppins. And I know a lot of people have seen Mary Poppins as their first show. And it's like, Mary Poppins has always been my favorite Disney movie. And what made it even more special for me is that I went with my dance crew and we got to go on the stage of the New Amsterdam theater where Aladdin currently is. And I got to sing on a Broadway stage when I was seven years old. That memory had always stuck with me. And from that day on, I tried to beg my mom to get me into acting. And I vividly remember going to an open call 
for a TV show. And I remember my mom saying, there's a hundred kids here. You're never going to make it. There's hundreds, there's hundreds. And I'm like, mom, I just want to prove it to you. And we found out that this is for a TV acting school. Let me be more specific. It's for an acting school. So she was able to see my audition as it was happening. They broadcasted on like this big screen. I didn't end up getting accepted into the school, but I was able to prove to my mom that this is what I'm passionate about. And she began enrolling me in classes and by the time I had entered middle school, I'd been in around five shows. And then I got introduced to choir. And then I began auditioning for region choirs and I got into them. And then what happened was I graduated, got into high school, began getting introduced to theater competitions. And what happened was that entire time from middle school to the beginning of high school, I experienced a year of loss right in the middle. I was 12 and I had lost four family members, one of them being my grandmother, who was the inspiration as to why I wanted to do acting. My dad's side is big with singing in the arts, and they were all for me, just following my passion and doing whatever, and at the head of it was my grandmother. She loved that I was so passionate. She was at every single one of my shows, and then she passed away suddenly, and what happened was I remember I was just so depressed for those four years and what ended up happening was just me getting into theater a lot more it helped me keep her memory alive like this is what she would want me doing this is what I love doing and I just began to grow my passion and now this year I won a state award for improv and I remember when I won the award I told myself that when I first wanted to start acting when I was around seven years old. I told myself I'm gonna be winning awards and it's because of all the educators in my life and just people who advocated for me to have that art education that I was able to follow my dream and whether or not I continue into acting in college, which right now I'm highly debating, I just am so happy that I've had these opportunities thanks to arts education. So um, this is a sad story. I'm sorry, guys. Um, so I have really struggled. Okay, I'm an open book, by the way. I really struggled with my life um, a lot. My parents are divorced and they used to fight a lot. And I just, I grew up with a mask. Um, I never was open with anybody. I never knew what I wanted to do. I wasn't even sure if I wanted to do anything. I just, I didn't know what was happening. Um, and then my parents decided to be nice for a day together and they took me to go see Wicked. Um, and I was truly blown away. And I, since then, much like Gianna, seeing my first show really kind of struck it with me. Um, and I've been doing shows in middle school and high school ever since. And um, I mean, I'm not that talented of a singer. I did dance for years. I'm mostly an actor, but you know, it's okay. Um, but people, for some reason, in me, and it really um, boosted my confidence and really got me to the point where I could finally be okay with myself and put myself out there. And I started to do more shows. And then when I got into, and I learned about Votech, I was, so surprised I thought they made this just for me because this is only the second year of acting that they're allowing um and I thought they made it just for me and I auditioned and I got in and we see musicals all the time I got to meet the entire cast of um oh my god the uh Temptations Broadway show Ain't Too Proud we got to see, I got to meet the cast. I got to take pictures with the cast. I got to ask questions. Um, this summer, next summer, we're still deciding because of COVID. I get to go to London and I get to meet and I get to see shows and meet actors. And it's for like the first time in my life, I really feel like I have a purpose um, to be there for others. Cause I feel that others depend on me to do my best in a role. And the same as I expect people to do their best. And I finally feel that I have a purpose. So 
So I guess uh, I guess I'll go. Um, so kind of arts education kind of got me into like theater and stuff because I was in third grade and this was another town, not Ewing, uh, Lawrenceville actually. Um, and the middle school was putting on a production of The Wizard of Oz and they wanted the little kids to come and be munchkins. So they sent this little little yellow slip home and, they, and there was like a hundred kids there and I was so nervous and uh, I got to be a munchkin. So, and uh, I got to sing, I was a part of the lollipop guild, it was a lot of fun. And that was really what uh, started my love for acting and you know, it inspired me to go and try out for the middle school and the high school. Yeah. I can go. Um, I had an experience similar to Alan's. The um, high school that I go to now was casting little kids to be um, in the production of Susical, like Little Who's. And so I auditioned and I was so nervous and there was like there were many people. My, I live in a really large town and there were almost 150 kids there. But I was picked and I was so happy. And um, funny, the, they um, had a woman sing for us. We had to sing happy birthday as our audition. And they had like someone do an example. And that woman is now my high school theater director. And I said, wow, I want to be just like her when I was eight auditioning for that show and now yeah, she gets to direct all of my shows and she is awesome and i really idolized like all the kids who were high schoolers and the the big real cast and i wanted to be just like them and i know that i make my younger self very happy when i get to perform every day and i put a smile on people's faces because i know there's you know little kids looking up to me and my friends who want to be just like us and that makes me so happy That's wonderful. Um, this is obviously not the same, but you're wanted to be just like them. The lyric from Rocky Horror was like, I wanted to be just the same, ran through my head. And I thought us theater crowd would um, enjoy that. <laughs> so um, anybody else have their story? Um, all right. <clears throat> um, so third grade came in. Um, I was given the choice of, okay, so within the fourth and fifth grade, you have choice if you want to do music or not. So with and then you had two paths to choose. You, you could either do choir or you could do band. Um, and I said, why not do both? So I got chosen to do both. So I was in the choir and I was within the band. So I, was, I chose clarinet because I asked my mom, oh, I want to do trumpet. Uh, she says, no, you're crazy. You're going to wake up the entire family at two in the morning <laughs> as, he, as I practice he should, almost every day within two in the morning, sadly. Um, but so I go in, I practice. I, I just I just kept on doing it. You know, my elementary school music teacher wasn't the best per se. Um, she wasn't pushing me much. Um, then my mom said, I'll give you lessons. So I went to lessons with another with a music store um, and I've learned a lot. And it's honestly because of him and because of my mom pushing me for lessons, I've been, I'm here where I am now. Um, in fifth grade, I chose, I, my mom was asking, oh, you should do strings. So she went to a string, she went to a string teacher, a private string teacher. So, oh, what instrument does, does I, do I want to play? And my mom jokingly said with my dad, and I still remember hearing this like, oh, Kevin's going to drop the violin and the viola because at the time I wasn't that good with hand coordination I would often be a bit clumsy um so let's do the cello it's already on the floor he can't drop it anyway um so I chose cello from then uh I've practiced almost every single day is for a good amount of time in my life with the exceptions of when I'm just only focusing on work or when I have finals and um I've been then sixth grade I went on to do oboe I've been doing this for oboe and cello for almost eighth grade Freshman year comes in, I still do oboe in high school. I do cello as well. Same thing with sophomore year. Um, in sophomore year, I was told, hey, we need spots within our marching band. Would you like to learn French horn or mellophone? So I say, sure. I pick it up as someone who never touched a brass horn within the entirety of my life until then. And um, I did okay, uh, roughly to say. Then I auditioned for a drum corps, which honestly, I never expected I would have gotten in. And 
I, at the time, I was not doing the brightest. However, they took me in and they've treated me as just a second family of sorts, and I'm so grateful for them. So with them then, I've been doing brass as well, as well as cello now. So I'm completely thankful for all of the outside groups and all of the art side programs that I've been in one or the other, because I'm, I'm sure there has been many that I'm forgetting about, but I'm just thankful for the community and music as a whole for like helping me where I am today. That's wonderful. You're like a friggin' prodigy. It's amazing. I, I did clarinet in fifth grade and the only valuable thing which came out of it for me was that I had a group of people to make jokes with, um, but that was it. <laughs> I'm not good at reading music, but that's amazing that you are and keep to it, wow. So I see Julia kind of gearing up. Um, has everyone who is in our, who has, has all of our panelists gone? I believe so. Oh wait, no, not, not Vehan, do you want to go? Yeah, so um, in preschool, um, my mom went to a um, music academy, the NJ Workshop of Arts, me and my mom. Uh, and I just looked at all the instruments and I just chose the violin. And then I've been playing that since up to seventh grade and I switched to the viola. And now I'm into high school and I still play the viola. Another another music reader here. It's amazing to me. Um, okay, so Julia Tichad, do you want to go? I don't. I'll go super quick. Um, I think my story is kind of similar to a lot of your guys's. Um, doing drama really brought me out of my shell. I was I was a painfully shy kid. I always always have felt more comfortable on stage or even like giving a presentation in class than actually having a conversation like face to face with someone. But I think the part of arts education that has been the most formative in like shaping my current career path and just helping me form my current personality was taking on leadership roles on my school speech and debate team and becoming a theater producer in college. And I think that would be my main recommendation, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Am I qualified to be making recommendations? I don't know. But, you know, as someone a bit older than the other people here, my main piece of advice would be to seek out leadership roles when you can, because those are skills that you gain just talking to people, meeting people, leading a team, those will carry you through the rest of your life. Um, so that's one element of being involved with extracurriculars and arts education that has been super, super formative for me. Awesome. And with that, Chu Chow, you're gonna bring it home. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't, my, my story isn't really as interesting as everyone else's, but <laughs> uh, when I was, I was actually, I was born here in New Jersey, but I moved down to Florida. So I could basically say I kind of grew up in Florida for most of my life for now, but, um, I joined like chorus, choir, all that. And it's kind of just out of obligation. I had nothing to do. So I was like, why not? <laughs> and then we moved back up to New Jersey. And that's when I started questioning, like, what do I want to do? I was like, I kind of wanted, I went through a, seri a, a series of phases. I was like, I want to be an Olympic runner. But then I was like, no, I get tired too easily. So I was like, okay, how about a dentist? I was like, no, I can't stand the sight of blood or anything. So I was like, no. So the only thing I turned to, I was like, I could, I could sort of sing. <laughs> so that's what I continued to do. And when I got to high school, I auditioned for my first musical, 1776, as an all-girls cast. And it really opened my mind. It blew me away. I was like, wow, I really enjoy doing this. So here I am just meddling around the auditorium. <laughs> that is amazing. So with that, um, it's gonna time to close down the stream, but as we can tell from everyone's wonderful stories that arts education is so extraordinarily vital. Every single one of these people could tell you, could go into probably a whole speech about how it affected their lives, how it made their lives easier, made their lives better because this is a, this is a thing which, which brings us out of our shell and gives us a community and just gives us people. And you know what people need? People need people. 
And so with that, I wanna lead into a little PSA about advocacy. So we have um, our Arts Ed Now campaign. Our next meeting, oh, we'll be launching the Protect Arts Ed Now campaign. It'll be a branch of the branch. Um, and it's gonna be launching, uh, it launched Monday, actually. Wow, I'm reading over this for like the third time now and I still am amazed by that. Um, but go to artsednow.org to learn more about this campaign, to learn more about Arts Ed NJ. People have come up to me, have come up to Chichao, Julia, to our boss, um, Priscilla, I'm sure some of you guys and been like, I don't know where to start with joining the arts because I love it and I enjoy drawing and I enjoy singing, but I don't know my parents are against it or I don't know what to do. And a good place to start is our website and just finding those facts of, of that it affects people and it makes life a lot easier. Um, and then just stay connected, follow us on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, and share your art with us with the hashtag ArtsEdNow. And um, please, please, please share it because we love sharing it with the world. And with that, if anyone has anything to say before we close out, please do. Always believe in yourself because I made that mistake of not to believe in myself and it took an entire village to convince me. And I just think if you wanna do it, you're worth doing it. Absolutely. That's my PSI. <laughs> do it. <laughs> um, anyone else? Okay, with that, I hope everyone stays safe. I hope everyone stays healthy. And I hope everyone has a wonderful night. Good night, everyone. Thank you and see you not next month, but the month after that. And then you will see me every Friday at 7 p.m. Bye. Are we still alive?